Welcome back to Questing Beast. I'm Ben. Today we're going to be taking a look at this review copy I was sent of the Tome of Adventure Design, which is a massive toolkit for designing adventures, put out by Frog God Games and written by Matt Finch. So this is a copy that I received as a gift from the Frog God people when I played with them at a recent convention. I thought I would take a look at it here. Here's what we have on the back cover. Uh, Matt Finch, in case you're not aware, is one of the fathers of the entire OSR movement and his uh, game Swords and Wizardry, which is a retro clone of original D&D, is a really fantastic game and is a landmark in the whole hobby. But this Tome of Intro design is useful for everyone. It is system neutral, although there is a focus on creating dungeon adventures. Um, but the amount of information and useful information it gives you is really unparalleled. Let's take a look at what we have inside here. As usual, I will put uh, links to where you can get it down in the description below. So we, it's broken into several different books, which I believe were published uh, separately originally, but this is a compilation. Principles and Starting Points, Monsters, Dungeon Design takes up most of the book, and we have some non-dungeon design. As always, uh, Matt Finch has a lot of fantastic principles and underlying theory for how the whole OSR adventure works. So we have some necessary elements right here. You need your backstory, a location, opposition to fight you, variation of challenge. This is a really big one. You, players get bored if they're doing the same thing over and over, so you want to have a lot of variety there. We have to explore stuff, uh, race against time, resource management, essential in OSR games, milestones and conclusions, and more continuation options. And this book offers resources on how to do most of these things. Starting with locations. So this entire book is random tables. Um, if you enjoyed my game Maze Rats, then you will really like this. Uh, this isn't a game, of course, it's just a set of resources. But like Maze Rats, it is a toolkit that gives you enormous amounts of gameable material and has all of the different pieces for you to put together. Now, this game is not, uh, the random tables in this book are not really designed to be rolled on at the table. This is a high level uh, system for building adventures for the DM to work on on their own. So it provides you with tons of little seeds. And with these random tables, they can combine in all sorts of weird and unpredictable ways and spark off inspiration in the DM's head for how they're going to design their adventures. It's very common for DMs to get stuck in a rut or feel like they've hit a dead end where everything feels the same. And rolling on these random tables can shake that up and give you lots of new ideas. So for example, let's roll a random location here. This is a D100 table. Let's roll up and see what we get. We have 23. So it is a corroded uh, 14. Corroded castle of the uh, 14 again. Carnal 66. The corroded castle of the carnal lord. That sounds appropriately terrifying. And we also have another way to get uh, adventure uh, locations here, the Airborne Abbey of the Ant Artifact and so on. Those can all be randomized. Or you can go with a purpose approach where you have the sort of uh, central idea around the adventure. So number 10, the Breeding 67, the Breeding Preserver. That sounds horrible. Or 92, what do we have there? The Time uh, 10 again. The time caverns, and so on. We have random tables for missions, along with uh, different types of missions. We can uh, have individual ones, item-based missions, right? With different verbs for what you're going to be doing: guarding something, hijacking, hijacking it, preventing the delivery of, and so on. Along with lots of random tables that can be used to flesh these things out, right? A D1000 table of different types of NPCs patrons and targets that you might encounter. Now, one downside, I suppose, of this book is that I would like more tables to all fit on one page. Uh, a D1000 table, clearly that's impossible. But a lot of the D100 tables and smaller tables sometimes leak from one page to another. It would have been nice for them to always fit on one page, but that's not always possible. Lots of random tables for creating the villain's plan. Uh, that's an essential part of any campaign. Players need opposition as mentioned before. And the villain's plan is all of those forces in motion that are hindering them. Lots and lots of pages of that. 
breaking things into concealment, uh, conversion, desecration, destroying communities, and so on, all of which have subtables and go into more and more detail. Now, the only book that I've reviewed that's really similar to this is probably the Metamorphica, which is another big compilation of random tables. However, the Metamorphica at times is very abstract, and then it has a lot of ideas that you really have to work to fit together. Whereas in this book, the focus is much more on usability, where things are focused more on fantasy tropes and on being immediately useful. So I really appreciate that. A, lo a lot less work needs to be done to make sense uh, of the stuff that you roll than I feel is true in the Metamorphica. Random acts, subversion to evil, right? More and more and more on the villain's plan here. Moving on to monster types, similar to a lot of monster random generators that I've seen before, a good strategy is simply to take several types of monsters, roll them up randomly, and combine them. Let's give that a shot real quick and see what we get here. So we have 81. So that's going to be a snake, and we're going to combine that with a 86. A stag, a snake stag, maybe a snake with antler horns. That's a really great starting point, and then you can build some powers off of that types of food that it wants, constructs, and then we have different types of creatures, like draconic creature. What are some nice features that you can randomize to uh, shake that up a little bit? Weird breath weapons, elementals, fey creatures, giants. And then near the back, we start getting into just random special abilities that you might want. Let's see here. We're still in the monster types. There's so much information in here. Every time I open this up, I find like a new table that I somehow missed with all sorts of new ideas. It's a great way just to shake things up and to make sure that your adventures don't get stale. Undead creatures, vermin table. So general monster tables. So the overall combat profile, great for just creating different types of tactical situations that players are going to run into, uh, along with different types of special attacks. So every combat encounter is going to be a different type of puzzle that they're going to have to deal with. Lots of information on that. And lots of things to really shake up the way that you look at monsters, including special defenses, distinctive attributes, but even stuff like their social organization, morphological uh, uh, changes and phases. Book three, Dungeon Design. So here's where things get serious. Uh, this takes up most of the book. And as we all know, Matt Finch is uh, really into dungeon design. His ongoing OSR live streams, which are happening over on his channel, I'll be sure to put a link to that as well, are really excellent and showcase what a good OSR dungeon looks like. So he's really an expert in the field. And he breaks it down into all sorts of uh, principles and then gets into the details. So you got what your basic adventure elements need to have. Races against time. So here's types of races against time, right? Any kind of time pressure that you're going to put on the players is going to make everything feel more urgent and is going to constrain their choices in a really great way. It's going to prevent them from waffling and they're going to have to be more, um, be more determined and be more motive, self-motivated. They're not just going to be sitting around waiting for something interesting to happen. They're going to have to take action themselves. Designing dungeon adventures. So we have the original purposes of the dungeon, because it's great if a dungeon has an overriding theme that's going to help guide you in figuring out what could logically be in there. It's going to make things feel a little less random. I know some people like really gonzo random dungeons, but having even themes for different areas makes them feel uh, more coherent and gives players more information that they can use to help solve that part of the dungeon. We have rumor tables, codes and ciphers, generating magic symbols, a lot of really great theory and advice on how to create a map. Where do you start? What should the general layout of a dungeon look like? And a lot of really concrete material like cool doors and archways. I love that. Uh, normal door, unusual mechanisms for a door. So this is not quite a trap, but you can have doors that are like puzzle doors. So let's roll on this to see what we get in terms of how are you going to open this door? Uh, 31. You need to turn around something, uh, 11, turn around the entire keyhole, 
uh, 63 until the water tubes connect. So uh, what does that even mean? You're, you're immediately going to get some pictures in your head of a keyhole that somehow has to be rotated and is connected to tubes of water. You have a bunch of mechanisms there that you can immediately build a puzzle around. Teleportation, diagrams of ways that you can lay out dungeons. So he has some randomizations for how to, for different types of rooms and layouts, but the same uh, layout that you roll can be used in a whole bunch of different ways, and he gives examples of that. Different types of areas, big landmarks. So we have large landmarks, uh, level changes, strange things that you might find. For example, let's try one here. We got 10. The canal of 60. The canal of terror. Or more strange things over here. We have special rooms and altars, uh, dramatic architecture, lighting, liquid, furniture, P NPC interactions, weird plants. Uh, just a never-ending trove of stuff to flesh things out. This is one of my favorite ones. Thrones. He has a D100 table of types of thrones, along with different types of names and that you can combine. For a total of, I think, about a million thrones. Because it would be 100 times 100 times 100. Something ridiculous like that. Let's roll up a throne here. We got 34. So that is, it has spikes. Maybe it's like the Iron Throne from Game of Thrones. 99. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, it's the white or black throne. Let's roll and see, see what we get here. All right, it's the white throne of something. 75. The white throne of the lost king covered in spikes. There you go. More types of landmarks. We have tricks. This is a really big thing since I love having tricks in my rooms. A weird room with something really strange going on that has a lot of benefits and drawbacks is one of my favorite things in a dungeon. It gives them something to tinker with and something to puzzle over. Though, even though it's not strictly speaking a puzzle, there are things that can be discovered about it. So here's a whole bunch of different ways you can give them clues, complex architectural tricks that you can throw at them, experiment tricks, stuff that they can mess around with, which is always great. For if, if your players are more mechanically or engineering minded, hazard tricks, mag magic tricks, and so on and so on. This is one of the best compilations of tricks and traps that I've ever seen. I know Courtney Campbell has a really great uh, PDF where he summarizes lots of different ways that you can do tricks, but this is another excellent um, addition to that type of literature. See, but possible beneficial conditions and curses that you can throw at people, some disease tables, and a large section of traps, which you can, which has a lot of elements that you can combine to create, you know, ways that it's concealed, ways that it's triggered, ways that it could be turned off, you know, types of effects that it has. So that when you players find a trick room or a trap room, they're never going to be certain how to deal with it. Everyone is going to be a little bit different and it's going to require player intelligence to get around. That's part of the variation that Matt Finch has talked about before. Some dungeon dressing. So if you just want to add a little bit of weirdness and a bit of flavor in there, he has a bunch of tables for that. And some miscellaneous useful tables, including hallucinogens. That reminds me a lot of the Dolmenwood series that I've reviewed before in Worm Skin. Animal and monster parts that you might want to have. I think it's a D1000 table. No, it's not quite. Um, random magic items. Let's see what we have here. Random magic item. This book does have, as you can see here, a sewn binding. Excellent. More books need the sewn binding. So magic item. Oh, this is the types of magic containers. Sure. Let's see what we got here. 95. Trousers. What's going on with our trousers? 86. Uh, parts of the item can be removed and take on magical properties. Different types of parts have different effects, have different effect, uh, same each time for that type of part, and so on. So maybe uh, you can take out the pockets of this uh, trousers, and they do something unique. Ah, a random spell generator. I love those. And generalized spell effects that you can create. I really want a random spell. Let's see what we get. 24. 
Icy 94, the Icy Serpent. It's a great spell. Some cool sarcophagi. Getting near the end here. And non-dungeon adventure design. The most useful stuff in here, I think, is mostly uh, the city tables. So castles, ruins, and cities are probably what's going to be used the most. Um, some tables here that remind me a little bit of Vornheim, but it's mostly focused on just ideas and content rather than the um, DM tricks that Vornheim is full of. Vornheim is more like a procedure guide for running uh, cities with some good random tables, whereas this is mostly just random tables. Law and order, prisons, religious influences, reason why the ground is holy. That's great. Let's try one of these. We got uh, 96. So a victory won by a hero or a saint. And 34. So multiple standing stones randomly placed, natural. Maybe a ring of dolmens where a battle by a hero was fought. And 76. 76. It's all painted one color. We have some on planar adventures and underwater adventures, waterborne adventures. And that about wraps it up with some desert wilderness tables and a couple tables for just random stuff in the wilderness. So it has most of the same stuff that Maze Rats has, for example, just way, way more of it. So if you want a comprehensive tome for helping you design um, campaigns and dungeons and adventures in, in general, this is pretty much unsurpassed. It is the book to get on that subject. Um, I strongly recommend it. I'm planning to use this a lot over the next few years in order to create um, new adventures for the kids that I mostly run D&D with. As usual, I'll put a link down in the description below where you can click on it to check this out and get it in either PDF form or in print form. So um, that's it for this, advent this, for this adventure. It has been an adventure getting through this. Um, it's such a huge book, but a really wonderful one and enormously useful. Uh, thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe. And uh, if you want to see more videos like this one, uh, thanks especially goes out to my patrons, um, Edbury Ennegren and the Threshold team, who have both pledged at a very high level to help keep Questing Beast going and so that I can make more and more of these reviews. Now, remember to hang around for next Wednesday. I'll we'll be looking at something a little bit different, and that is another zine. So this is a zine from Malaysia. It is part of the Thousand Thousand Islands setting, and it is quite stunning and spectacular. Very different than the previous zines that I've looked at in terms of the way that it's formatted. And it has just some really uh, spectacular drawings. Some of my favorite illustrations of a D&D setting that I've ever seen. So hang around for that. Uh, that's it for this review. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you guys next time.